We know you're in here, Bobby. Yeah, yeah, you try and find me. Uh, hit those lights. I tried. They don't turn on. There ain't any electricity. Bobby? Jeez, Benny, you can't see your hand in front of your face. Yeah, we got him trapped in here. We'll search till we find him. You go on that wall. Jeez, Benny. This place is the creeps. What's the matter? You scared of a blind man? No, it's just I can't see. Uh, you got any matches? Yeah. Well, light them. I heard him. He's moving around. Over there. Uh, hold it till you sure you see him. Listen. Uh, he's over there someplace. Now, uh, strike another match. Benny, he's gone. Nah, listen, I can still hear him moving around. Hey, look. Halfway up that ladder. Theater 5 presents Blind Man Fluff. A quarter. That's a half a buck. You got 40 cents change coming. <laughs> Poppy, your ears are so good, I'll bet you can hear the difference between a, a 10 and a $20 bill hitting the ground. <laughs> to be blind and run a newsstand in this town, you have to. People just as soon cheat me as anybody else. Here you are, Mr. Parker, 40 cents change. Oh, keep it. No, I can't do that. Go on, keep uh, it. Maybe I could put it on a number for you, Mr. Parker. Why, you know me, Poppy. I never play the numbers. My sainted mother used to say to me, Ed... If you're going to break the law, never play for pennies. Make it pay. <laughs> ah, Poppy, that's the trouble with you. Nobody ever taught you to think big. If you thought big, you wouldn't be stuck in this lousy little newsstand. You'd own it and have some poor slob working for you. Well, I'll see you tomorrow night. Uh, Mr. Parker. Yeah? You left your umbrella, Mr. Parker. What? Here's your umbrella, Mr. Parker. What are you talking about? You know I never carry an umbrella. Here you are, Mr. Barker. Now, stop waving that at me. <laughs> Mr. Barker. Are you all right, Mr. Barker? Who's that? Hey, answer me. Who's there? Hey, you. Hey, you with the metal shoes. Come back here. You, you got the wrong idea. I didn't finger him. Come back. Come back here. Give us some names, Poppy. You can be a big help to us, Mr. Popper. Boys, boys, I've been blind since I was 14. I told you what I heard. Warden had to be lying. Mr. Barker buys his paper from me tonight like always. Like always, he gives me a big tip. And the next thing I know, I hear this car start up and then a chopper cuts loose. Now, how am I supposed to tell you who rubs out Big Ed Barker when I can't see him? You're nice young fellas. Let a poor old man go home and get his rest. All please. right, Poppy, knock it off. This isn't a couple of housewives you're trying to set up for a touch. We got your record laying right here on the desk in front of us. Uh, 1938. Arrested and convicted for petty theft. 1943. Arrested and convicted for an attempt at defraud. That was the year you posed as a blind war veteran. 1949. Arrested and convicted. All right, all right. So I got a record. You want to hang me on it? I served my time. Ain't you guys happy? There's one thing about you cops. A guy tries to go straight, you don't care. You let him make one little mistake and you hound him till the day he dies. Don't try to paint us any pretty pictures, Poppy. We know you. I've watched you operate since I was a rookie. You've double-crossed more people than I've made arrests in this town. People call you the only man born without a conscience. Is that right, Poppy? Ah, uh, boys. What's the price for fingering a man as big as Barker, Poppy? Boys, boys. Who contacted you, Poppy? Give us a name. Now, what is this? What is this? All of a sudden, a blind news he's in charge of who gets rubbed down on his corner? You're the police department. This is your town. You're in charge. It's getting so an honest man's afraid to walk the streets anymore. Oh, cut it out. You're breaking my heart. Look, Barker was the second syndicate boy to get knocked off in the last month. That means new talent is trying to move in. Carl and I have to know who, Poppy. We have to have names to fit faces. You can help. If I knew, I'd tell you. Mr. Barker was my friend. Come on, you'd set up your mother for a price. 
What did you get for Barker? Somebody contacted you. Who? Come on, you ain't deaf and dumb, too. Give us names, Poppy, some names. No, 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 look. Look, Cap. This ain't Joe Citizen you're trying to punch in a box. This is Poppy. I've been around the block. I've been in and out of this crummy police station so many times I don't need eyes to see it. I don't know where you get the idea that I set up Ed Barker. I never said I did, and I'm not going to. Now, if you think you've got enough evidence to hang me for an accomplice, then go right ahead and hang. Try it, and I'll make you sweat. Because you and I both know you can't make it stick. If you ain't gonna charge me, I'm going home. Now, you listen to me, you small-time louse. You don't give orders to me in my police station, you take them. For your information, we shook down that little rat hole you call a newsstand and found a fistful of number slips. That stand was clean. You only thought it was clean. You lousy pink. You, you planted them there. That's your story. I didn't find them. A patrolman did. He'll yeah. testify in court. That stand was clean. Why? Were you expecting the place to be crowded with cops before okay. the night was over? Thanks. I don't touch the numbers. Not since the last time I got busted. I learned my lesson. That's why you sent me to jail, ain't it? To learn a lesson, eh? Carl. Yeah? Come here a minute. Okay, Poppy, you can go home now. What? What, what is it? You take a good look at our little friend here, Al. This is probably the last time we'll see him alive. What are you talking about? Word just came over the phone, Poppy. Somebody must have seen you finger Barker. People on the street say that the syndicate passed a death sentence. They passed it on you. That's a lie. Okay, that's a lie. You guys made that up to scare me. If we made it up... What are your hands shaking for? It's a straight scoop. If you go back out on the street now, you're dead. On the other hand, if you turn state's evidence, we can place you in protective custody. Yeah, yeah, and send me up the river when you're through with me. It's better than being dead. Is it? Okay, Poppy, that's all. Get out of here. You, you got no more questions? Not me. Ain't you going to hold me for the numbers? Poppy, you could throw rocks at City Hall in front of me right now, and I wouldn't touch you. You're going right back where you wanted to be all along, back on the streets. A couple of days, you'll be out of my hair forever. Huh? What are you waiting for? Ain't, ain't nobody going to take me home? You know the way. Well, at least lead me to the front door. I can't find it by myself. You know your way around this crummy station. You said so yourself. So find the door by yourself. Poppy! Go away. Telephone for you. Tell him I'm not home. T -t Tell him I don't live here anymore. All right, suit yourself. Uh, no, wait. Well, wait a minute. I'll answer it. Might be my money. I'll answer it. I'll answer it. Go ahead. It's all the same to me. I'll just turn off this light. You don't need it anyway, and I keep forgetting that. Got to save every penny I can. Last month, the lights are yeah, well, Turn it off. Turn it off by all means. Just leave. Is that you, Poppy? Yeah. Who is this? You didn't show at your newsstand all day today. Who is this? Tonight, Poppy. Who are you? You get yours tonight. Listen, who is this? Hello? Hello? Who is this? Hello? It wasn't a lie. I've got to get out of here. They could have called from across the street. Who, who's there? Who's there, I say? Bobby. Bobby, is that you, Bobby? Poppy? Come here for a minute, boy. Why are you hiding there? Why didn't you answer me? Because. Never mind, Bobby boy. Come here a minute. Why? I want you for a favor. Tell me here, why don't you? But, but because I want to give you a quarter. I want you to run to the store for me. Can I keep the quarter? Yeah, bless your little heart all for yourself. Come here, child. So blind old Poppy can put it in your hand. No tricks now. No, none at all. Just give me a hand. Ow, my arm! Shut up, shut up. Don't shut up, 
you. Shut up, you little brat, or I'll kill you. Do you feel that? That's a switchblade knife, and one more peep out of you, and I'll cut your head off with it. Mm-hmm. Now, now, you listen to me. Do as I say, and you won't get hurt. One word, or try anything funny, and I'll cut you to little pieces, you understand? Yes. Yeah. You know where that old Morton warehouse is down by the river? Yes. We're going there. Why? Never mind why. You're hurting Just my come eye. with me. It'll hurt a lot more than that if you don't straighten up. There's a car in the street beside us moving very slowly. Who's in it? Two men. What are they doing? I don't know. Answer me. Oh, I don't know. Looking for house numbers, I guess. They're, they're driving away now, aren't they? Yes. Let me go home, Poppy, please. You don't need me. You walk around all the time by yourself. Shut up. I gotta have your eyes tonight. Please, Poppy. Now listen, if you start crying now, I'll kill you right here in the street. I swear I... Please. You don't need me. Uh, Look, Bobby. Oh, Poppy doesn't want to hurt you, but I need help. You see, there's some bad guys after me, Bobby. They'll kill me if they catch me. I get around town all right because I use my ears and I memorize things, but I still can't see. Those two men in that car could have had a gun on me and I'd have never known it. That's why I need you, Bobby. I need your eyes. Aren't they like the bad guys on television? Yeah, that's right. Have you got a gun in the warehouse? No, no, Bobby, but I can hide there. I own that warehouse. Yeah, a lot of people think I'm just a poor old blind man. I got a lot of property in this town. More than people that drive big cars. I saved my money, boy. That's the difference. Are you going to hide there? That's right. If they don't get us on the way, we'll be safe. I need you to see who's behind us and things. Okay? Okay. Now, listen. Shh, wait. There's somebody walking behind us right now with taps on his shoes. What does he look like? Oh, he's not a bad guy. What does he look like? He's just one of those big kids with a black leather jacket. That's the idea, Bobby. We'll make it. They're not going to kill old blind Poppy. <laughs> I can hear the traffic. All right, come on. Lights changed. Safe to cross. And down at the end of this block is the warehouse. Can you see anybody hanging around down there? No. Well, look careful, boy. I did. It's too dark. Just the street lights are on, and I don't see anybody there. Good. We'll make it. Listen. What? Two men are walking behind us. What do they look like? They're so far back, it's hard to see. And how are they under the street light? Well, what do they look like? They look like bad guys. Well, we'll walk faster. Now tell me if they walk faster. They're walking faster, aren't they? Yes. We got to hurry. My arm hurts. Keep up with me. I can't. The warehouse is just a few more steps. I want to go home. Shut up. Now here's the door. Stand still. While I get the key in the lock. Hey, Poppy. I want to go home. Stop twisting. Out. I want my mother. Come back here. Mother. Mother. Come back here. Hey, Poppy. Get him before he gets inside. Don't shoot again. Drop dead, punks. <laughs> We're in my territory now. I can't bust it. Just blast it. Go ahead, blast it. Yeah, you'll never find me. Not in these hundreds of crates. We know you're in here, Poppy. <laughs> you try and find me. Hit those lights. I tried. I didn't turn on. There ain't any electricity. Poppy? Miss Benny, you can't see your hand in front of your face. Yeah, we got him trapped in here. We'll search till we find him. You go on that wall. Jeez, Benny. <laughs> this place is into the creeps. What's the matter? You scared of a blind man? No, it's just I can't see. Uh, you got any matches? Yeah. Well, light them. I heard him. He's moving around. Over there. Yeah, hold it till you're sure you see him. Listen. He's over there someplace. Now strike another match. Benny, he's gone. 
Nah, listen, I can still hear him moving around. Look, halfway up that ladder. Light another match. I ain't got no more. Now, come on, move to where we've seen that ladder. We can get him easy now we know where he is. He was climbing for that catwalk overhead. We'll nail him up there. He's got no place else to go. Poppy, you might as well give up. You're a dead man. Come on, John, and get it over with like a good guy. Never. You cheap punks. This is Poppy's warehouse. This is home to me. Ah, uh, you missed him again. Okay, Poppy. Here we come. Hey, listen, he's opening the door up here. Hey, there he is. He's going on the roof. Shoot, go on, shoot. Ah, you can't kill a fox in his own lair. Try and get that bar off. Go ahead, shoot. A lot of good it'll do you. By the time you dumb punks figure out how to get me, I'll be over the roof of the building next door, down the stairs, and out on the street again. That should be right about here. Yeah. 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 And I said, that's funny. I can't feel anything on the other side. The roof should be here. Did, did I get turned around or something? No, it should be right here. No way to feel along the edge. It's here someplace. Who's there? It's nothing. How can it be anybody here up here alone? Hey, somebody's up here. I hear you. Who are you? Answer me. No, stay away. Hey, look, I'll pay you. I, I got money. I'll pay you. Tell me what they paid you and I'll pay you double. No! Stay away from me! Give me... Help! Listen, we never laid a hand on him. You mean to stand in front of Poppy's poor mangled body and tell me I caught you guys down here taking the air? Yeah, something like that. Now look, you wise... Hey, Carl. Yeah? Come here. You two guys stay right where you are. What is it? It looks like they're leveling. They couldn't have pushed him off. Since they tore down that tenement next door, there's no way to get up on the roof from the outside. The only other way is through the door from the catwalk. Poppy had barred it from the outside. Well, then who pushed him? Nobody. He was all alone up there. Wait a minute. You're not trying to tell me he jumped. He wasn't the type. Well, either that or he went over the edge, not realizing they tore down the old tenement next door. The only thing I saw when I was up there was an old oil can blowing around in the wind. Well, it'd be nice to think his conscience finally caught up with him. Yeah. It was more probably the tin can. Yeah. All right, come on, you guys. We're going down to the station. Presented Blind Man's Luck, written by George Bamber and directed by Ted Bell. In the cast, Scott Cotsworth, Robert Dryden, George Petrie, Peter Miner, Ronald Liss, Ruth York, Maurice Tarpley. Original music by Alexander Vlas Datsenko. Orchestra under the direction of Glenn Osser. Story editor, Jack C. Wilson. Executive producer for Theater 5, Mr. Lee Bowman. We invite your comments right to Theater 5, New York 23, New York. That's Theater 5, New York 23, New York. speaking.
This has been an ABC Radio Network presentation.